Ravindra Kumar, a writer, a storyteller, and an inspirational speaker. 38 books written by me have been published, and my writings have been translated into 29 languages. I write in almost all genres picture books, and some of them have awesome, awesome illustrations by some of the best illustrators of the country. I have written chapter books, books for tweens, books for teens, books for young adults. I have written a couple of biographies. I have written on some very, very serious topics. This is on the OXO Act. This on the Juvenile Justice Act. This on diabetes. By the way, I'm a diabetic. This book was written for an NGO and it showcases the struggle, the trauma, the resilience and finally the triumph of some girls who have fought every kind of adversity that is possible. I have written folk tales, but my favorite genre is sports because I love playing sports. I love writing about sports. But if you think that I'm good in sports, sorry. I played all sports and I played them all very, very badly. Some of these books are available with the House of Books and Tales library. You can borrow them or order your own copy. I was all of seven when I wrote my first poem. It went something like this. Topsy and Tim went for a swim. Topsy swam well and broke the spell. Tim swam badly and went home sadly. Now, you, can you imagine a more ridiculous, horrible poem than that? But the poet in me was thrilled that I had written something which was absolutely superb. I took it to my dad. For a few moments, I thought he will tell me. Why are you writing all this silly poetry? Look at Mr. Chadda's son, Putul. He does algebra and geometry. Do that. Or study some geography and history. You are writing silly poems. Or you would have said, Okay, it's a good attempt, but you know, you should do better. He didn't say any of these things. He just picked me up, gave me a tight hug and said one word, wonderful. Today, if I'm a writer, 38 books, 29 translations or whatever, it is because of that one single word, wonderful, and that gesture of my dad hugging me and giving me that kind of encouragement. I think the author in me took birth at that moment. My daughter Ankita was four, my son Aniket was born. Now my wife and I both work in a steel plant and uh, naturally Madhvi, my wife, was quite busy. She had her hands full taking care of the baby and the household chores and all. So she encouraged me a lot. She told me, you're a useless fellow. You can't wash dishes, you can't run a washing machine. You can't uh, sing lullabies. 
you can't even wash bums you think you're a great writer no tell ankita stories while i take care of aniket now this was a challenge i had to accept so i decided to tell ankita little tales but being the egoist that i am i said why panchatantra why jataka tales i will tell her tiny tales which i can create and which i will create so i started telling her stories and she lapped them up but i'm not really sure it was the content of the story or my crazy absolutely absurd antics jumping around singing and dancing but whatever the story she loved they went to the word processor and from there to the editors they got accepted some of them and that's how the journey my journey as a writer started but my biggest challenge was when aniket uh, was around 2 or 3 now their tastes were completely diverse ankita wanted stories like once upon a time long long ago there lived a beautiful princess she fell in love with a tall dark handsome prince and in strode a giant but the prince using his ingenuity his intelligence and his skills caught the giant and imprisoned him in a dungeon and the prince and the princess lived happily ever after but for my son it was completely opposite i had told him aniket beta our guruji is bruce lee and i put a huge poster on his almeda so every morning he would get up and he would say parnam bruce lee and he wanted action he was a great fan of spider man superman batman iron man the only man he hadn't heard of was batman because batman had not been invented or discovered by then so anyways for him the stories would start with dishum dishum from the word go and as the story progressed the action the violence got gorier and gorier till the final scene uh, the hero would have smashed the villain to pulp his kidney would be flying out of the window and the hero would declare his cry with a great clarion call of victory kriga tarzan or something else so for me to kind of strike a balance once upon a time long long ago with dishum 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 was one hell of a challenge but fortunately i think i managed to meet that challenge that is why 38 books and la 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 now how did i continue writing for years together i think my uh, greatest source of inspiration has have always been my kids so how did these stories sometimes happen they happen in the uh, the funniest of places in the rather weirdest of circumstances once we were waiting in the uh, in a clinic of a dentist and it was a long queue and the kids were getting bored ankita was i think 11 and aniket was 7 and they started pestering me for a story i said like you guys gone crazy here in the waiting room of a dentist i'm going to tell you a story but they insisted when your son asks it is difficult but when your daughter demands it is impossible to say no so naturally i had to in those circumstances in that kind of a scenario i thought of a story and it is called a tale of tales it's a creation story about a snake and a mongoose who are the best of besties and become the worst of enemies that story was illustrated by one of the greatest illustrators of our times mr pulak biswas went on to win a lot of acc- accolades it got translated into many languages many editions in fact it's been translated into a language which uh, uh, to be exact is called bihori uh, it is from the chota nagpur uh, uh, region and it's spoken by hardly 2000 people you know so that's how popular this uh, story has become so uh, now when i look back in time those uh, 
rain drenched evenings the summer twilights those uh, sunny winter afternoons ankita aniket and i we would sit together and explore the beauty the magic the wonder of stories fantasies folk tales and lose ourselves completely in that beautiful enchanting world for me if you ask me what are my best memories i would say those days when i and my kids were connecting through stories and uh, i would uh, you know invite or i would uh, beseech and request all parents to try out this storytelling with their children as a kid i was a very goody goody sort of chap you know sitting in the front bench carrying books for the teacher to the staff room doing the homework class work almost perfect i very rarely got into trouble except once it so happened that we had a free period you know i think i was in class 6 so i was fond of chess so uh, our uh, class teacher mr rao was absent that day and uh, i and my friend ravi we decided to play chess in the class and i sat in the teacher's chair and ravi sat opposite me and on the table we kept the chess board i was so engrossed i had made a perfect move and i was about to check and meet ravi when suddenly i saw a kind of shadow looming over me and i looked up and there i had that big large bald head of mr rao staring at me from a distance of what 6 inches i got the fright of my life and mr rao had big hands and long fingers and he used to always say i'll kick you with my left hand but that day he gave me a tight slap with my right hand i was a puny scrawny kid and i went flying but because i was so puny and so scrawny i got away with one slap but ravi was slapped all around the class then it was very painful but today when i imagine sitting during class in the class teacher's chair and playing chess I think that was a bit too much. So that was a funny thing which happened to me. As I was growing up, my bestie was my dad. He always encouraged me as far as my writing endeavors were concerned. I remember when I was around 12, I had written a full-fledged novel. 56 pages in my spidery scroll now my dad had a lambretta which he would take uh, to the mechanics once a month so there sitting in the mechanics uh, shop or garage in the veranda me sitting on a stool he sitting in a chair and in the background the music the cacophony of the mechanic shouting do number pana lao che number pana lao babu kya kar raha hai ramu utho in, uh, in all that cacophony I would read out my maiden masterpiece to my father and he would listen to every word sometimes he would offer gentle unobtrusive suggestions otherwise only encouragement my absolutely favorite books are the asterix comics what wonderful imagination i mean it's so amazing that even in translation they are so superlatively superlative i mean you run out of words you know when you try to describe uh, an asterix comics for instance uh, what i uh, really like about them is apart from uh, the humor is the fact that it is a typical uh, david and goliath syndrome you know I in my books also I always try that the underdog uh, somehow vanquishes the bully, the big bully. So here the girls take on uh, the might of Caesar almost in every comic, and 
you know, pulverize them absolutely. And just see the names, fully automatics, unhygienics, panacea, and uh, geriatrics, get a fix, cacophonics. My wife calls me cacophonics every time I want to sing a song or something like that, you know. And uh, the humor is uh, continuous. And in the names, the illustrations are absolutely awesome. Even the little uh, dogmatics, you know, when he's angry or he's upset or he's, uh, you know, uh, getting bullied and all that, every expression is so beautifully etched. For me, they stand out. My favorite character from a book uh, would be, I think, Hagrid. He's uh, big, he's powerful, he's gentle, and like me, he loves animals, and he has a great sense of humor. There is no formula uh, while choosing the title uh, of the book. But the basic idea is to keep it, uh, you know, it should be catchy, it should be, uh, it should serve like a hook because that is what a reader would first notice. So some of the titles which have gone down rather well is uh, like this I had already mentioned, A Tale of Tales or A Tsunami Called Nani, uh, Just a Second, uh, A Perfect Match. So that's the way I choose the titles. First and foremost, uh, it is my attempt to make my story entertaining, interesting and pacey. Because if the reader is bored, she'll just switch off. At the same time, I want to convey a tiny message which is subtly tucked in the story. I don't want to be preachy or moralistic or didactic. The message should or the value should flow seamlessly as a part of the narrative. The young reader should internalize, should imbibe the value without even realizing it. And uh, I believe a story uh, which is only entertaining, it's not really fulfilling its purpose. Other than writing, what I enjoy uh, the most, like I mentioned, I think, is uh, storytelling. And I enjoy telling stories to kids in huge numbers because I draw my energy from the jumping, singing, dancing children in front of me. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had gone to uh, Sharjah Children's Reading Festival uh, and from there we were ta we taken to Abu Dhabi. So there when I entered the hall, it was like six basketball courts combined and there were 1100 children. Madhvi who accompanied me, looked at me and the expression on her face reflected uh, pity and uh, apprehension. How are you going to manage this? You're going to suffer from brain hemorrhage. 1100 kids, one hour. And I said, just leave it to me. And for the next 60 minutes, 1101 kid had a blast. We sang, we danced, we screeched, we yelled. And I told a story and they responded in a superlative way. And I cannot tell you uh, whether there can be a moment ever in future that would be more sublime than this experience of mine. The other uh, activity which I love and which I think I'm rather good at is dancing. I love to dance and I've been uh, dancing on stage for God knows how many years. And here uh, my best experience, my uh, favorite experience is 
uh, we had gone to uh, uh, Greece, uh, Athens, to uh, attend the International uh, Children's Congress, and from there we went to Santorini. So there, in a Greek uh, mm, uh, restaurant, uh, which was on the, which was like a dhaba, Indian version, you know, of a dhaba, they were playing uh, music, which was again Greek and Latin to me, and I decided to dance to those tunes. And my wife again, you know, Madhvi again warned me, you know, you'll be lynched. But uh, I started jiving. And they have this tradition that if they like something, they uh, break this ceramic uh, plates and uh, yell, Appa. And by the uh, time I had finished dancing to the Greek music, the floor was strewn with pieces of ceramic and the air was echoing with appa and that was really an appa moment for me i don't think i'm qualified to give you a message but yes i'll share a thought please read as much as possible and in as many genres as possible because when you read, your creativity is stoked, your imagination is kindled. For instance, suppose I make a statement to 30 children that in a jungle there lived a lion. Now for every child, the jungle would be different. For every child, the lion would be different. Fat, short, thin, ferocious or not. So what are you doing? In your imagination, you're creating your own version of that particular visual or even words or story. But when you're watching television, Chota Bheem, 30 children are watching Chota Bheem. Everybody is seeing the same Chota Bheem. So there is no scope for your imagination, you know, to take a, take a lunch someplace. There's no scope for your creativity to just uh, cut loose reading gives you that and if you want to be a writer please remember that anything and everything can give you an idea and writing is all about ideas writing is all about sparks and what are those sparks a caress of a parent a conversation in a train, a scene on television, a tweet on Twitter, a post on Facebook, a mention on Insta, anything and everything can spark an idea. So if you are in that space, you can grab these sparks and write. And write as much as you can and write first and foremost for yourself. Because if you don't enjoy what you're writing, nobody else will. So happy reading and happy writing. If books are my besties, a library is like a playground with my friends. It's like a picnic forever with my family. My latest book is called The Canine Chronicles. It is the autobiography of my canine Aryan whom I call a guppy a grown-up puppy now this is set in the COVID times you know for 99 days Aryan and his family comprising 250 plus teenagers and 220 something you what should I say uber cool mature adults were closeted in a single house this is a perfect recipe for disaster world war three but what a blast we had you know lots of musti lots of maza a sweat in memories shaped by empathy and soaked in love and for aryan 
those 99 days were the best days of his life. He got a tsunami of attention, oodles of uh, love and delectable stuff to eat. But there were moments of panic too. One day, uh, I think at around 5.30, he was sleeping dead to the world thinking about his girlfriend Prai or Priyam Vada. When suddenly he heard a loud din and he thought like the asterisk that the sky has fallen on his head, he rushed out to find, to find his entire family beating the hell out of every steel vessel in sight and his papa, the worst singer on planet earth, even trying to belt out a melody. The second time when he got a fright of his life was, I think it was a twilight and uh, his papa came out of the house in a bright yellow shirt and a blood red mask. But this book is also about empathy. Empathy for fellow humans, empathy for fellow canines and most important, empathy for nature. It talks about how it is so important for all of us to realize that we are not the owners of environment, we are merely the custodians. This book is available on Amazon. And you know what? The proceeds of this book are going to care. As, uh, an organization which is devoted to animal rescue and is located in Bangalore. So for a woofy, juicy, must delicious read, do pick up your copy of The Canine Chronicles Love and Laughter in the Times of Corona. Woof, woof.